kings and queens, lords, lairds and landowners, bishops and priests. Their history is written in carefully chosen text, on parchment and in leather bound volumes. Tales of power and of conquest. These are not those tales. What these are, are the stories of the people of this land, of our lives, our loves and our fears, our aspirations and our struggles, our successes and our failures. A people's history, an oral history, told in rich language handed down through the centuries, in song and in rhyme, an articulated echo of identity, who we were and who we have become. And the gatekeepers to this perpetual illumination, our bards. Their role in our cultural cohesion cannot be understated. I present to you today, Parik McNeil, bard to the nation of Scotland. Right. For old Lang Syne, eh? And for the future. Well, hello, I guess, Ki Admira Fadge. Hello, and a hundred thousand welcomes. It's Mishaheen Parig McNeil. I'm Parig McNeil, tradition bearer, Gaelic bard, and bard in all of Scotland's different languages, because I love the culture and the language and the way of thinking, the paradigm of this ancient nation, which has given so much to humanity. And nowhere is that more exemplified than in traditional verse composed by the bards of old from time immemorial. And here today, we are at the fulcrum of the very place that could have changed the history of Scotland and the world forever. Sleeve and Chirim, Sheriff Muir, on the hills above Dunblane. But behind me here is Carn and Rahach, the monument to the Macraes. The Macraes, the valiant clan who stood on the front left of the Jacobite army of 1715. And because there was insufficient cavalry support, they took a serious amount of casualties. But they would never retreat, because that was not in their creed. Twelve times they reformed and twelve times they came back. And was it not General Whitman, who was on the side of the English, who admired them for their courage, saying he never saw such a fine line of men standing in perfect unison. And he lamented the fact that they had so many casualties. <clears throat> but the poetry of Sheriff Muir will make sure that this event, like many events in Scotland, will never be forgotten. Oh, we build monuments. But what better than from the breath and from the mouth of the bards who were eyewitnesses who lived there at the time. In 1715, there lived in the island of Egg a man called John MacDonald. He was one of the great, great Clan Ronald race. He was known as Ian Du, Mach Ian, Vik Elain. That's Ian, son of Blackheard Ian, son of Alan. And they couldn't have used their second names because they got the postman very confused since everybody had the same second name. He was what they called a vernacular bard and he composed many a verse at that particular time, but he was an innovator. See, Highlanders were never stuck in a lay-by. They were always willing to innovate, like the great McCrimmon Pipers, who took pipe music to its zenith under the sponsorship, the patronage of Charles II. And so was with Ian Tu. Normally, the Gaelic poems that were composed by the clan bards were in praise of their race, of their chiefs, of the valiance of their men, of the, hist the history of their battles to help them to stand strong in the face of the strife. But Ian Du was to introduce a new convention into Highland poetry. It was called Allies, whereby 
as you'll hear in part of this song. All the clans of the North were invited to stand together in common cause. Even ancient enemies, such as the Campbells and the Macdonalds, in the same muster roll. And if that was not enough, the nobles of the lowlands were to come and join the cause. And no gale up to this point had ventured to put such a piece together. This is what we called a brausnahag, or an incitement to war. This was a national call to arms. And the way he constructed this wasn't like the old Gaelic strophic metre, which I'll give a few examples of in a minute. This was a new type of convention called Aharan or Auran, but it was symmetrical metre, whereby the assonances, the vowels, would resound out like, the, like an iambic heartbeat. So when the warriors would strike upon their shields, they would hear it and it would stir them up, being reminded of the heroic deeds of their ancestors. Well, this particular poem opens out with an ancient prophecy. And the prophecy stems back to the days of the great and the one and only William Wallace. There lived a man called True Thomas or Thomas the Rhymer. And according to the oral tradition, he was taken into the land of the she the fairy folk, or the queen of the fairy land. And he was in there for seven years and a day. And he was given a gift of two things, a tongue that would never lie and an eye that would see into the future. And he foresaw and he foretold of many things that was going to happen in Scotland's future. He saw the day when a French queen would rule Scotland, who would become the Queen of France as well, our beloved Queen Mary, one of the greatest monarchs we ever had. How tragic her end. One day her son would be the king of a united Britain. And of course that was James VI. But he also foresaw the day when there would be a great battle had in a north of the Clyde. And the gales would arise from their glens. And Highland culture would have parity, equity with that of the rest of the world being recognised as a cultural entity. This was Gaelic nationalism and indeed Scottish nationalism. The song opens out with this ancient prophecy of Thomas's, and it translates, this is the time of the prophecy to be fulfilled, when every noble will arise from their glen, and wild, fierce anger in the service of the crown. And the second verse, on that account, every prancing horse shall shout for joy. On that account, the English shall be destroyed, and the French, our companions, shall be at our back. Be sass and eke I chigun tain gav gachun, be na frank eke non kaumpi, gre hell near a cool the MacDonalds. Near the year is clomped on with no leo and hackerack, na behold the herd for all the hun cause for not get off. Look his of not called a can nor still life yerak, mohokoi gum the god of gave a tosh a grev. The MacLeods. The leo de compor, gran cabal, the cur shield, dry marigo can let us and gorge it and skia. Gurniers for oak yell, the cur a grihurt lia, gur and crow a dollar doa, the casaguas, gregoria of the Maclean's. Clung in there and on drill, on heat sound, the sun rake, dry machios, a gun ein, there's gun tang, hush and boy. Dream me go to heel, sick nux trio, could don't loa, simic me look just jeerich, with the inching of suez. The Camerons, Gurleon, Verlev, Helm, the heck, ew, and Lochiel, Fear Kolag, and the Varag, and the Sayak, and the Griav. 
Id mert kola, vei mert kola, vei ser kona krohion. Shimo ku sam rus kad nakju te dovshia the Mathesons. Konik vahen an geir won hit train the cold alarm. An nova pasni din biot base vit galak. An aun dola vua dok bin krua dolor kalak. Bukun yo kud beiman nuri yid kud ferek. And the last verse says, in common cause we shall stand together and our blades will be over the heads of the strangers. Might sound like a bloody song, but there is nothing romantic about war. But certainly these people lived there at the time and they should know. And of course, war bears its tragedy as well. And the Gael, the Highlanders celebrated everything in verse. Birth, death was commemorated, battles were extolled, Ancient bloodlines were praised. Everything. There were songs for rowing, songs for working, songs for spinning, songs for weaving the cloth. And it was all poetry, and all poetry was sung. But by the same bard, I thought I might give you another one before I move on to Sheilas MacDonnell, the great bard of Kepoch. She was a fantastic bard. And she was one of the great bards of the 15 as well. Sheilas Nekichbich, as they called her. Uh, a fierce, fierce Jacobite, a fierce nationalist. At the battlefield of Sheriff Muir in 1715, Alan MacDonald, the 14th of Clan Ronald, was to die of his wounds. See, the Gael, the Highlander, celebrated, commemorated everything in verse so that those verses could be handed on to their progeny, to their children and their grandchildren, lest they forget. It was the great Callum MacLean, the folklorist, brother of the late and great Sordy MacLean, who said, quote, The written history will tell us what is politic for us to hear, but that which is handed down by word of mouth will tell us the full story. And in the second last verse of that piece, Lament to Clan Ranald, it mentions a hero who was called Ruel MacKillianog, Ronald son of young Alan. He was Ronald MacDonald of Morar. He was a taxman, a Don Yuasal, who, who had studied the art of combating batting the evil one. And he was the one who uh, took the confession of Alan Gerrig's last, his father before he died, who had given himself to evil and he'd accepted his confession. But Alan, of course, was just the exact opposite, a total gentleman, but he died of his wounds because of the curse that was put upon the family. But in that second last verse, Ranald, who was a mighty man with a two-handed sword, had been killed by a dun-coloured bull the previous summer, and that's why he couldn't join them at the rising. But after the bull gored him, he lay there dying, and he composed a pibrochk for the bull that had killed him, and it was called an taravoer. Such was the sense of humour and honour of the Highlanders that even on their deathbed they would honour a bull. Was it not himself that composed and Tarav Jerak? But you see, poetry and song was one of the ways in which information was handed down. The other way, of course, was storytelling. And to be a bard, you had to know a good number of tales from memory. This was utterly essential because every piece of verse that you composed was ingratiated in your culture. There was nothing modern about it. There was an ancient line from, from these poems and verses, even just the way that the, the vowels were put together, they would go back to a line way back to the kings of old, like Con of the Hundred Battles, and, and even young, long before that, to very ancient times. <laughs> Gnachik 
Ashir kaina hanu ashlan na khuat yadri fose Ha minam khatu sna tu shkmi Moru ai akhlau na kaun nan kurische Aminam khato sna hatu shkmi Mukru skinam nahu na nahu nan budyan han Aminam khato sna hatu shkmi Cherry in a mikes a quick shirty jorse. Ah, minam hato snadush cook me. Manchi gotten nantawin be ha work na costi. Aminam khato sna hatush kakmi Nanyi likshiv suhas anan kruat asantun yathak Edrish nan suhash lan kuahagas kumanta Skunskyors is a wife, leafwood, I not bun your king. Yan and an cattle, oh, so the cleave. Lian the lame, a guard me like and coic cheeks, a meadilla. Snasha kid at any mock, Hail Chinur Ross at Kinnest. Skiddle Stun in your fair for you, Egnabors. Stun in your fair for you, Egnabors. Mark, it's soon, Doc Nampina, get a crew, Yak Nak Chilak, Nak Tug of Cood, I'm not Girak Nurago, Brick and Chinna. Vami, you will do spirit of all. Vami, you will do spirit of all. Vau chau mount skak for the gris bitu ski per na fareki li the kasa chingala vak nuda yiri gan gara vorst stugun ji bragan tanavar mu vorst stugun ji bragan tanavar mu vorst saunam shu vada gara vnix bitu tu gan chala kid. As to lie before me raps, it a niag but in Kyalaki. Stood a hingy, I guess Talavin Muradon. Stood a hingy, I guess Talavin Muradon. Seldom carried to heal a spin go nigher at ye. Jesus scared a go hit girl, Viki Kellen and ye coo. Ira lene ganyesh mar bukhor Ira lene ganyesh mar bukhor Gain snok yu akan gau da gan reik a hukshin gan gauf tach Khabavua na cha kao gain nish mar kawan gan kyaun shin Oda hain rao da stao da gu ain falluv O rain rill is tower again for them. Aki the commission to an effort to sculpt your vur na clarega, who can trio as an aching, convin garrigan crakan. Reen and reen are the cake of the car. 
Rinan, 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 rinan